no, I'm sad. You're sad. Ugh. It's the sexy getting ready song. Ah! It's finally time to honor my favorite show ever with my most highly requested video ever as I attempt to recreate the pull routine from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Okay, here's really all the context you need for this scene. The woman who's about to pole dance is Rebecca Bunch. She was working in New York City as a high-powered lawyer making dough, but it made her blue. So she moved to West Covina, California in pursuit of Josh Chan, who is the man sitting behind the pole. She's desperate for Josh's attention. She will do anything to get it, even though she knows full well he has a long-term girlfriend, Valencia, who is the woman sitting next to Josh in these clips. In this episode, she's trying to weasel her way into Josh's friend group, so she gets herself invited along on their beach trip, but she turns it into this whole thing by renting a party bus with a pole inside, and when no one is paying attention to her on the party bus, she decides to take matters into her own hands, and that is how we get this pole routine. Let's take a look. Reviewing the routine. I got this. <laughs> Okay, so she's pulling off her shirt, tossing it to Greg. What's happening? I don't know, but I'm so excited. All eyes on me! She's spinning oh, around the pole. Here. Okay, and then immediately, it is a high kick spin. <laughs> and she's basically showing her booty to Josh. What? That's pretty much how I would look at her too, but like, not in horror and shock, in admiration got a butterfly into an inside leg hang, slide to the floor, and she licks the pole. <laughs> okay, and a middle split drop. Lots of splits in this routine. <laughs> Everyone's just staring at her shell shock. Okay, we have a low shoulder mount into a handstand this could not get anywhere uncomfortable into a split yeah <laughs> another middle split type move hooking her upper leg on the pole and sliding down that's like i saw something did you guys saw inside okay and the big finish of the routine she grabs the pole below her and slowly slides her hands up her butt Basically everyone reacts the way they do because she's doing way too much, going way over the top, and it is now my responsibility to do the same. Let's get to training. The training. January 21st, training session one. I have my laptop set up in the corner so I can consult the video while I puzzle out the moves. Move number one is a spin, this is on static by the way, where Rebecca kicks one leg up high and hooks the other low, releasing the lower hand. It immediately presented a problem. Oh, she's much more flexible than I am. Ooh. I gave it another try. And another. My leg that is supposed to kick straight up would not go that way. I got close, but I couldn't hook the ankle on the pole. The first move, the easiest move. I moved on to the next bit, where Rebecca saucily drops it low, then lifts her butt and tosses her head back, all right in front of Josh and Valencia. That was easy enough. Down, butt, head, up. She goes... Sexy. Move number two is an extended butterfly to an inside leg hang slide to a floor jade. That is, an inversion, then hooking the outside ankle upside down on the pole while bringing the inside leg straight behind you, with the arms extended in a split grip, then pulling in to catch the pole in the inside knee pit, sliding down, and lifting the hips up into an upside down split on the floor. The original video contains so many cuts that it's hard to tell how she gets into and out of these poses, so I just went with a traditional invert and, surprise, ran into a problem right away! I've never actually done an extended butterfly with the outside ankle hooked. I always just hook my knee, which is slightly less advanced, and I don't even know how to shift that leg to get the ankle instead without crashing to my doom on my crash mat. I tried approaching it from an inverted crucifix with the pole caught between both of my legs, but uh, that was terrifying. 
And then I added some grip, which made the inside leg hang slide nearly impossible. My tongue remains inches away from the pole. Yeah, that cleaving my tongue is close, right? Oh, no! <laughs> I actually touched it! Ah! Let's try another move. She gets her body basically parallel to the floor, thrusts her hips, and then, bracing with a shoulder, inverts into an inverted crucifix. She brings her hands to the floor to push up into a handstand, allowing her to bend her legs so she can circle her booty around above her head. She then opens her legs into an upside-down split handstand and cartwheels out of it. I fail to lift my lower body in the low shoulder mount. I get the shoulder mount, but remain crouched into a painful ball, way too low to the floor. <laughs> There's also a slide into a middle split on the floor. My split ends abruptly as I smack down onto my ass. What's happening is that this is so much harder than the JLo routine from Hustlers, which I managed to do almost two years ago. And of course it is. Here's why. JLo performed all of her pole work herself. She is a regular, terrifyingly fit but regular, celebrity who trained for six weeks to do a certain set of pole moves. This routine right here was actually created and performed by a pole instructor. Yes, sorry to spill some secrets, I guess, but most of the pole dancing in this episode is done by this woman, Jenny Gonzalez, pictured here posing with choreographer Kat M. Burns and episode director Kenny Ortega. Yes, the director of High School Musical. Here's another photo of her, side by side with Rachel Bloom, who normally plays Rebecca Bunch. Jenny's a pole dancer and instructor who specializes in incorporating salsa and tango into pole dancing. She also has insanely flexible legs, and I obviously do not. <laughs> In the last move, she stands side onto the pole, hooks her outside leg up by her head at the ankle, then spins backwards, bending the bottom leg. Did I mention she hooks by basically doing a standing middle split? Oh, you have to be kidding me. <laughs> it's clear to me that I won't progress with this routine until I gain a little flexibility. With that in mind, I hit the mat for a froggy stretch, and I'll stretch my splits in all directions as often as possible. Day one is ending in tears. Hopefully, the next session is gonna be different. Training session two was on January 23rd. I added a little training onto the end of my conditioning session in which I tried and failed again to do the low horizontal shoulder mount. I can invert from a traditional invert grip in that position, so I tried that, but then getting myself into a handstand was extra difficult because of the thickness and squishiness of my mat. I'll definitely have to do this routine without a mat underneath me, but I don't trust this invert yet, so I need a mat. Fit hot girls really do have problems too. I cover my face in defeat and shame as I crumple to the mat after another failed shoulder mount. Training session number three was on January 26th. After a frustrating tricks training session, I tacked on some time to work on this routine. Here I am doing the first spin, incorrectly, then the cute little flirty moves with shoving my butt in the air, and then I tried to go for the butterfly and just could not get my knee to hook. I decided to transition right into the inside leg hang slide and slid down really quickly directly under the wood floor since I won't be able to have a mat for this routine. I didn't get hurt, but I did just lay there in frustration for about 30 seconds before going to stretch until that, too, sparked frustrated tears. I'm just saying that I suffered. February 2nd, training session 4. I've committed to changing the lower shoulder mount to a low, regular invert instead because I just don't feel like I'm secure enough in the shoulder mount to not fall on my head. However, it was like I forgot how to invert entirely this day. I couldn't get the motion at all. Over and over, I fail to lift my lower body off of the floor. Mm -hmm. 
Then I went ahead and tried the routine without a mat. I missed the butterfly but slid down in a more controlled way this time, but the middle split came to an abrupt halt as my sweaty feet stuck to the wood floor. I ended this training session with more stretching, and actually remembered to film it this time. Here I have my feet propped up in the wall, trying to lower them into a split. Look at me, I'm so good at yoga. Training session 5, February 4th. I've officially put more time into this routine than the one from Hustlers, but I really want to do my best to get these tricky moves right. Thankfully, things seem to happen today. I practiced all the non-inverted moves in my sweatpants, and that was a good way to warm up my brain. Then, I was able to do my butterfly into my inside leg hang and slide down into the floor jade without issue. I have decided I'm just going to do a regular butterfly and not an extended one, just for my own health and safety. My first attempt at the low invert didn't work, but the second allowed me to actually hook my legs and get into the handstand. I really, really don't like handstand exits, they freak me right the hell out, but I actually did the little cartwheel thing out of the handstand and didn't die! But most miraculously of all, I managed to hook my ankle in the side split, middle split move. Stretching actually worked! I'll have to figure out what I'm actually doing, but it's starting to work. I'll never have problems again! February 8th was training session 6. Instead of tacking this training onto a conditioning session or anything else, it's all I'm focusing on today and things are happening. I practiced to the song and despite the quick cuts in the show, I can pretty much keep up with the moves as they're happening in real time. After some awkward foot squeaking, I can do an imitation of the middle split drop. I can consistently come out of the handstand with the cartwheel. I can hook my ankle and do a passable imitation of the final spin. I feel good about this. This will be my last training session and I'll do the actual recording next. Maybe this dream won't poop on my face like a seagull at the beach. The look. I hastily painted my fingernails a neon greenish yellow like Rebecca has on the show. And um, I'm gonna do my makeup. Even though you won't be able to see the nail polish or the makeup at all with my light setup, oops, I also filled in my eyebrows, put on some mascara, blush, and shimmery eyeshadow, lined my eyes to make them more like Rachel Bloom's enormous expressive peepers, and put on some lip tint. My hair is about three times as long as Rebecca's, so I'll be creating a faux bob by putting it in a low ponytail and pulling it through itself, then pinning everything up. It's not the most stable hairstyle of all time, but I like it. Oh my god, I just tugged a little bit more of it free and then I moved my bangs and uh, suddenly I have a bob. <laughs> Where's Rebecca Bunch? Right here! Though I scoured thrift stores for one-piece navy swimsuit like Rebecca wears in the show, I couldn't find one, so I'm making my own one-piece by tucking a black tank top into black underwear. I did manage to find an exact dupe of her green denim cutoff shorts though, so those go on top. I put a scrap of fabric over the metal button to keep it from scratching the pole. I decided last minute to grab a white top that I could take off and toss towards quote-unquote Greg, so don't be surprised when that shows up in the final routine. Let's talk lights. Here's a little setup tour. So this light down here is putting a beam of pink light on the floor because in the show she has a light underneath her. I have these Christmas lights lit up to provide the sort of ambient light that's on the party bus. And then here's another uh, color fill light pointing upwards, making the sort of bluish green. And then behind me, I have my ring light to provide enough light that you can like see my face. Showtime! Just like the Hustlers routine, this one required three takes as I didn't have my hands correct or messed up the timing in the first two. Plus, this was my first time doing the routine without my glasses. Whoops. So here's take three. 
think I have one more take before my hair falls out for good. So let's make it a good one. What's happening? I don't know, but I'm so excited. All eyes on me. Oh, they're on you. I saw something. Did you? I think I saw inside of her. I'm going to play a side-by-side -side comparison as I offer my final reflections. Please politely ignore the fact that I ended up several seconds behind almost immediately. I could if I wanted to but I chose to put the entire sequence together with no breaks and no cutaways being my own stunt double, and I'm pretty darn happy with the result. I'm also not ashamed to have modified a couple of moves. Maybe one day when I'm more confident in my ability to stay alive, I'll get that extended butterfly and low shoulder mount. Jenny Gonzalez is a brilliant dancer, Rachel Bloom is a brilliant actor, and I'm so happy to have filled their tiny shoes ever so briefly. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend is my favorite TV show of all time, and I highly, highly recommend that you check it out if you liked this glimpse into Rebecca Bunch's chaotic world of music, dancing, and making her friends uncomfortable. What pole routine should I recreate next? You know, I'm proud of myself. I guess all I have to say is, well, Kelsey, you've done it now. The subscribe button appears on the right, a suggested video and playlist appear on the left, 